Okay. Hi, I'm Mike, uh, I'm Chemical Charlie, and my partner, Pie Guy Pepin, is recording this video, and we're going to be talking uh, in this video about uh, taking glucose and combining it with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water, and um, whether that reaction gives off heat or absorbs heat. And um, I can't really easily show you the the action of glucose and oxygen, but I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to use uh, paper, tissue paper, which is a cellulose, and cellulose is a polymer of glucose. So let's just see what happens. Uh, it's a little windy today, so I'm going to try and cover it up a little bit, but let's see what happens when I uh, ignite this. Okay, you can see it is burning, so uh, and it is giving off heat. I can feel the heat. All right, and uh, there's a, it's not a real complete combustion. There's a little bit of carbon forming, but mostly carbon dioxide and water. And actually, if you put this in here, uh, the water, well, of course, it needs it needs oxygen, but oh, <laughs> it used up the oxygen and, and formed like a. Uh, a vacuum, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. There's a little smoke in there, but okay. And once the oxygen comes back in, it burns some more. So that was kind of uh, fascinating. Uh, and uh, so it must be an exothermic reaction, but we're going to try and uh, explain in this video uh, why it's, it's an exothermic reaction. So uh, in the next part, we'll uh, go into that. Okay, so uh, in this demonstration of the burning of glucose, we use cellulose as a model for burning glucose. And cellulose is a polymer of glucose. And uh, when it burns, it produces, it combines with oxygen and produces carbon dioxide and water. And there's just as much carbon dioxide produced as oxygen used up. And for every uh, mole of uh, glucose, six moles of uh, oxygen and Six moles of carbon dioxide are produced and five moles of water. Uh, the explanation for why there was a partial vacuum that we observed in the inverted jar was incorrect that I gave. Although oxygen gets used up, just as much carbon dioxide is produced. There's not a decrease in the number of moles of gas in the container. The reaction produces hot carbon dioxide and water vapor. So it produces more gas than it uses up. These gases fill up the container, force the air and some of themselves out of the container. But as these gases cool, the water condenses to liquid water and the remaining gas contracts. And this is what causes the partial vacuum. Okay, next we're gonna to turn to uh, why the reaction is exothermic in terms of bond strengths of reactants and products. Okay, to understand the exer thermicity of this reaction. Uh, let's take a look at the structure of glucose and oxygen, and they form carbon dioxide and water. <clears throat> and if you look at all the bonds that are broken, let's imagine that we broke all the bonds of the reactants and changed them to atoms, all right? That would require energy. Um, and uh, if you look carefully, the, the five carbon-carbon bonds are broken, seven carbon-oxygen, seven carbon hydrogen, five car oxygen hydrogen, and six oxygen oxygen double bonds. Six uh, adds, adds up to 30 bonds that are broken, and 12 OH bonds are formed, and 12 C double bond O bonds are formed. So actually more bonds are broken than are formed. You would think it requires energy to break bonds, and it releases energy to form bonds, but we'll see that these bonds are much stronger on average than, than these bonds. And so the reaction releases energy. So we're gonna use an Excel spreadsheet to uh, demonstrate that in the next part of the uh, talk. Okay, here's the uh, spreadsheet where we're gonna calculate the energy needed to uh, break all the bonds of the reactants and form all the bonds of the product. First of all, if you look at the bonds, the OH bond is a fairly uh, large bond energy, 463, and the carbon-carbon-oxygen double bond is a, a very strong bond. 
whereas the bonds that are broken uh, by and large are not that strong all right and even the oxygen oxygen double bond for a double bond is not that strong so uh, if you add up the number of bonds broken times their um, respective energies uh, and add it all up you get 12,430 kilojoules required to break all the bonds of the reactants and if you look at the products uh, you get more than that 15,192 kilojoules so if you take the difference between those heat required to break the bonds which is positive minus the heat released all right which is negative you get a negative heat change meaning it's an exothermic reaction with minus two thousand seven hundred and sixty two kilojoules per mole this is uh, uh, an approximation but probably a pretty good one because we're we're using average bond energies to calculate it so uh the reaction is exothermic and part of the reason uh, combustion reactions are so exothermic is that oxygen uh, doesn't have a really strong double bond and when you especially when you're combusting organic molecules the carbon dioxide double bonds are much stronger than uh, the oxygen oxygen double bonds okay i hope uh, you found that interesting and uh, useful in your teaching or learning Thank you for your attention. I'll see you next time.